Okay, we are live. Good to see everybody. Uh, it's uh, Saturday, May 20th, 2023, 10.02 a.m. Pacific time here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I hope everybody's had a good week. And as we get the weekend started here, what a better way to do so than with the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i live here in the studio. We're going to get it out of the box. We're going to do the unboxing, of course live and in person of course so that is what's on the agenda today this is a pretty interesting laptop i got a chance to go hands-on with it back at ces 2023 back in january when lenovo brought it over to las vegas i took I had some hands-on time with it quite extensively of course that was a pre-production unit this of course is a retail production unit and for those wondering there is a link in the description below to buy it over at Best Buy, it's got a price of $1,999, all inclusive. It comes with the keyboard, pen. I think it also comes with a mouse. We'll check it out in a moment. And then, of course, uh, the unit itself. We'll get to the unboxing in a moment, but I want to thank uh, the good friend here, of course, Lim Shadiest, for the uh, $5 super sticker. So thank you so much for that generosity. And anybody who wants to give a super chat or super sticker, of course, you're more than welcome. Help support the channel. Helps get devices like this. Although this one was sent over by Lenovo. So I want to thank the team over at Lenovo for getting it to me. And of course, Lenovo is not getting any kind of copy approval. This is being done live. And of course, they're not paying me or sponsoring me. Just so you know, we can get that out of the way. All right. So let's say hello to a few people before we get the unboxing here, because I want to make sure we have enough of you here. And we've got Mark uh, Hodgson here looking forward to it. Yeah, we're going to take a look at this in detail today. And of course, I will have a recorded video. Santiago Gutierrez, good to see you. Constantine, a good friend of the channel. How are you? Yeah, I'm here, my friend. We're doing it. Good to see Galerme from France. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So William, we're here. We're doing it. We're doing it live. Of course. Uh, we're going to find out once we get it out of the box, my friend, unskilled spy. Good to see, of course, our moderator and good friend, William Cohen. And we've got Andy Kyler, a member here. Good to see Nessa's garden of treasures here. Thanks to the slim shadiest for that super sticker. Uh, Magnus is here, of course. Hi to you, my friend from Norway. Nice to see you. Vaporizer Bobby, once again in the house. Good to see you. Um, we've got Drishal here. That's good to see you, my friend. And we got Arthur here. So we got a lot of here, my friends. So let's uh, let's set it up here. Let's talk about the specs right off the bat. I can show it to you on the screen. Of course, we're looking at dual 13.3 inch, 2.8K, OLED displays, they are 400 nits, independently controlled in terms of the brightness. That's good. 100% uh, DCI, we'll get into all that. And of course, I have it too soon there. Let me bring this back a little bit. And let's pause that there. Of course, we're running the 13th Gen Core i7, 1355U, Iris XE graphics, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 5X RAM, running pretty fast at 6,400 megahertz, 512 gigabytes of M.2 SSD storage. I'm not sure if we can upgrade that, of course. Uh, we'll look into that. And then, of course, it's got an 80 watt hour battery. Of course, we're running two dual, we're running dual OLED displays. So I'm curious to see how the battery life is going to be. Wi Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.1. And then, if we move on to the next stage here, we can see here. Uh, it's got a weight of 1.34 kilograms, 2.95 pounds, 5 megapixel IR camera with a privacy shutter switch. And then, of course, we've got the Dolby Atmos speakers, Bauer and Wilkins. Tidal teal is the color here, folks. And as I mentioned earlier, you can pick one up over at Best Buy. It's coming soon, but the link is in the description below for more information, of course. And that's $1,999 as we have 67 of you watching so that is the specs on it so without further ado we're going to get this out of the box 67 of you let's set it up right here we have the box so without further ado let's get this out of the box All right, looks like we have a mouse here. We'll get to that in a moment. Oh, 
Okay, so really nice packaging. So I like the fact that they include a Bluetooth mouse. Let's get this out of the box real quick. So while we have it here, if we could figure out how to open this thing up, looks like it opens up from here. And they give you the battery. It looks like one AAA battery. If I can grab this. How the hell do you get this out? You know, I am a professional, by the way. How the hell, how the hell do they expect you to get this out? Okay. You know what? Screw it. It's all a good use of our knife here to get that open. Okay. So they give you the Bluetooth mouse. I think we've seen this one before, right? So it's a nice little Bluetooth mouse. You can see it there. Let's put that to the side. And then, of course, some documentation for that mouse. And let's uh, get to the box here. So the box looks pretty nice. So it shows you the dual screen layout here. And, of course, I already went over the specs. So let's take this out. Okay, so let's check out the first box here. Let's make sure that stays open. And let's get this open here. Okay, so it looks like we got our power charger here. And I believe this is going to be 65 watts, as you can see there. And it's US prongs, of course, USB type C. We'll put that to the side. Here we have the unit itself. Little diagram there. So this piece goes over here, I guess. And then I don't know what's in there. We'll figure that out. This looks like it's gonna be the maybe the keyboard. So yes, this is the keyboard. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. And then this might be the stand. Actually, this is some documentation. Okay, so that that's a little bit of a little deception there. Okay, this is going to be a lot of stuff here. So this is going to be the stand, okay? And I think there's a pen in here somewhere. Somewhere here. Nothing in there. Okay, so it's got to be in here. Yeah, I think it's right here. So the pen, there it is. There she is. Okay, a lot of stuff going on here, folks. Not your typical unboxing. And let's put this to the side. Let's get this off the pen here. Well, we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. And then let's bring all of this off of the table here. Now that we got that out of the way, let's put this over here and let's see how this works. Of course, this is the keyboard stand or the laptop stand. So, so this is going to go like this, you see, boom. And there's going to be a place for the pen. We're going to put that, uh, to the side for a moment. Let's take the paper off the pen, this wax paper, everything on pretty nicely, pretty nice presentation, of course. And if we can always get this off, there we go. 
and I'm not sure if this uses a battery or not, but we'll figure it all out. And let's get all this garbage off of the table. Okay, so this is where the pen will go. Okay, so it gives you an option there. And then of course you can see it right there. So very, very nice. Okay, let's go back to here and let's put this to the back over there and let's get this out of the box. Well, let's get out of the package. Absolutely gorgeous. Title teal is the color here, folks. Uh, this is going to be CNC machined aluminum. Very, very nice here. Okay, you can actually see it uh, top down right here. And I think this is pretty gorgeous. Okay, so let's see if we can open this with one finger. Sort of can. Of course, I have a slippery table. We can just about do it. So we got some more documentation here. And a little diagram, which will help us uh, figure out the different gestures. So eight fingers to bring up the virtual keyboard, three fingers to bring up the virtual touchpad. Okay. And remove the Bluetooth keyboard before closing the two displays together. Okay. Upper part. We'll, we'll, we'll figure all this out. And there she is. So we got dual displays here. And before we start playing around with this, let's, uh, so we have a hundred of you watching. Let's see how this uh, goes on to this little stand here that they give you in the box. So it's a pretty nice package so far. You can see it here. Um, it's a little tall. Let me, that's about as much as I can zoom out. Uh, let me see if it's, yeah, it's a little tall, but you can see it there. But I do like this, all right? So I do like the option that they give you here, having a dual display of like this in a vertical mode. And then of course you could always put it like this and you have two side-by-side -side panels like that. So that's actually pretty nice. I have, do have a lot of studio lights here. And of course, you don't need to use this. You can always go, just use it like a laptop. So let's see how that's gonna work. So if I do four fingers, that brings up the virtual keyboard. Now let's take a look and a listen here at it. It's like a haptic feedback. I don't know if I would use this, you know, all the time, but in a pinch it might work. Of course, we have a physical Bluetooth keyboard. Let's see what happens when we bring it down. Let me see the gestures here. Of course, it gets, uh, there's a lot of stuff to go over here. So I'm gonna use my reference guide here. To bring the keyboard down, I'm gonna have to, let's see here. Okay, so I have to place eight fingers and pull the keyboard down. So this is th this is eight, and that brings it down. Okay, so I'll get to your comments and questions. A lot going on here, folks. That how that brings it down, and then again you have a little bit of haptic feedback on it. So it actually feels pretty good. You got the caps lock there. All right, let's put the keyboard on it. Let's see what happens. So if I put it over here, it magnetically attaches, and yeah, so. Let's see if this is turned on. Do I have to do anything just to make sure? Okay, so let me just get this turned on here. Right now it's off. Now it's on. Let's see if that, oh, I have it upside down. <laughs> Live, folks. There it goes, so it's working. Now if I put it over here, doing this all real time here. So now we have a, a virtual mouse pad here or a touch pad. You can see it here. And it has a little bit of feedback on it. So pretty interesting, okay? But they do give you the mouse as well. So if you wanna have more options here, let me put the battery in the mouse. Let's see how this opens up. And yeah, we gotta put the battery in. How do we open this up? Not a big, oh, here we go, all right. And the plus goes there, boom. And then of course we go to the Bluetooth. 
And actually, the virtual uh, touchpad actually works out pretty good here. And let's add a device. Mouse. Actually working out pretty much better than I thought. So let's find the device here. Let's put it in pairing mode. Pair it, connect. Okay. And it's connecting. And it should be connected. Yep, and it is. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. So now, if you don't want to use the virtual keyboard, you have the option with the included mouse. So a nice little package there. Okay, let's go to your comments and questions and make sure. I don't want to miss anything. Very nice color, Raphael. Good to see you. Didn't see the mouse coming. Neither did I. Nice packaging. I agree. Laptop of the decade. We'll see. First dual commercial laptop tablet. We're gonna. It's pretty interesting. That's for sure. Absolutely. Johan, we have over 100 of you watching. About 100 of you right now. I saw over 100 earlier. All right. So while that's done, let's uh, bump up the brightness here. Let me see how... Yeah, it's pretty bright. And you can see here both displays are being shown there. Okay. So a lot of options with this very interesting uh, laptop here. And then, of course, um, we can, again do all the things, let's connect it up to power here. So, but before we do that, actually, we need to look at the ports. So let me put it over here. Let's take this off for now. Let's close that and let's look at the left side, okay? So, and if I go to the close up here, you can see it. Move that out of the way. Okay, so there we go. On the left side, we get a Thunderbolt 4 port. It is a USB Type-C full function. You can do data, charge, and display out. On the right side is your power button, a kill switch for the webcam right there. Two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, and that's it. No headphone jack that I can see on this, but it does have the three Thunderbolt 4 ports, so that gives you pretty good functionality. And then, of course, this is the title teal is what they're calling this color. It looks pretty gorgeous to me. CNC machined aluminum. And this is what the underside looks like. Okay, it's got the Evo branding there. So pretty interesting stuff, folks. Uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I can tell you that. Now, it's nice to have the physical keyboard, right? So let's, uh, let's do the vertical mode. Let's see this way. And again, this comes in the package. Everything all in and then you can connect the keyboard there so you can get a look at it here again a little too tall for my camera but you can see having two displays gives you pretty some pretty interesting options all right let me put it on me for now i'm going to connect it to the network here so i want to put in my password to my wi-fi and let's connect that and then of course let's see one Okay, and we're gonna connect it up to power and I'm also going to show you what I'm doing here. So if you look over here, I'm gonna connect it to this Thunderbolt 4 port. Again, it's a little high up. I would have preferred it a little bit more down over there, but of course that is uh, where they put it. So, and you can see here, this is what I'm seeing. So I'm seeing the bottom screen. So if I go down, if I move this down here, oh, actually, you know what it's showing? So what I have to do actually, let me use the mouse here. So what I have to do is go down to the display settings and mirror this, right? So I would have to mirror this. So let's, uh, let me identify it. Okay, that's three. So let's, uh, let's duplicate on one and three. So here you can see it. Okay, so we can do it like that. Let's, uh, let's retain modifications for now, keep changes. All right, so you can see what I'm doing. All right, but I think we're gonna put it on here for now, just so you can see how this dual screen works. Very glossy displays, of course. Let me, um, let me put it back on me for a second as I enter this in. Let me start without my data here. Now, I didn't even do the pen yet. And in fact, I don't need to connect this. Let me unconnect, let me disconnect that. Let me go back to the way it was so you can see it here. 
So I am now doing, so when you're dealing with three displays, and then of course, when I connected the HDMI, that's a third display, it gets a little weirded out only because what I'm trying to show you on here, it's hard to duplicate it. I'll have to look into the settings. But the you can see a lot of glare there. But if I put it there, because I do have a lot of studio lights. All right, let me, um, let me load in some uh, benchmarks. We can get a look at this. And again, there is the back of it. But I'm going to put it into the laptop mode. I think that's the best way to look at it for you guys because it gets a little tall otherwise. And let's just put this over here, and this will bring up the virtual keyboard, or I can use the mouse. Now, if I put this like this, let's just experiment live here and let's see what that does as far as the yeah see now in fact what i could do now is yeah so this is a little little confusing in the sense that i want to start confirm and there we go let's confirm that okay so you're not seeing what I'm seeing here. So what I'm seeing is this, but what I need to do is figure out the display setting so I can show you. So let's not duplicate. Let's extend a laptop one and three. And that would extend it. Let me, now let me revert. I didn't like that. Let's see here. If I show only on three, let's see what that does. I'm, I'm just, listen, I'm just experimenting right now with it here. So it's not doing that. Okay, so let's go back to display settings. Just trying to get to the right combination here. Let's keep the changes. Okay, we'll just keep the changes here. You can see what I'm doing here. All right. So there it is, okay, and pretty nice so far. Let's see, let's put this over here. That brings up the virtual touchpad. Gets about a second to load in. All right, we can just watch what I'm doing like this. All right, so let's, uh, let's go to Geekbench. Actually, pretty nice keyboard. Let's download that. See the pen here. I don't know if we need to put the battery or it says what to do there. You can see it here. So it says, my eyes are so bad. We have to unscrew this. I think we have to take out this paper something like that, okay? And then let's screw that back in. Guess who just showed up, McAfee? Yeah, so now it's working, okay. So now, there we go. Okay, so that's working. We're gonna have to remove McAfee at some point. We'll do that later. Download from Windows. So the pen, again, nowhere to store it, but I think if there's maybe a spot over here, yeah, see, there's a little magnet there. You could actually probably store it there. Boston Elevators, there is McAfee on this. Pretty interesting. Every time you adjust the position, the device, you hit the start, but I'm just looking to see, I'm just using this for the first time. All right, so let's uh, let's download that. Let's get an idea of what the 1355 can do. And let's open that. Actually, this virtual keyboard does work out pretty well. We have 111 of you. Good to see everybody. Do me a favor. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I've got a lot more content on this on the way. Why is McAfee bloated on every Windows PC? It's called money, my friend. It's called money. All right, let's go back here. Put myself down there. All right, so let's go to Geekbench. Pretty responsive touchscreen on the top of so far. 
So pretty interesting. We'll take a look at the camera also at some point. And I already had one running, so abort, okay. Okay, we'll agree to that later. Let's make sure we're on the right uh, setting here. Right now it's showing balance. Let's put it on performance. 10 cores, of course, with the Core i7-1355, 12 threads. That's eight efficient cores, two performance. Let's run the CPU test. Let's see how that'll do. And hopefully that would be okay. It'll give us a decent score. I don't know if the Lenovo Vantage app allows us to change it or it's in the Windows settings. Let me uh, use this mouse here. Nice that they include the mouse, that's for sure. Okay. Doing all this live, folks, not easy. 116 of you watching too. So a lot of interest in this, it seems. Is it gimmicky, my pal, uh, foot, uh, foot, foot? I don't know. It's uh, so far pretty interesting. We're going to get a weight on this. I'm going to measure my, my own measurement of weight here in a, in a moment. But uh, let's go here for a minute. And I just want to see the device power and performance. And right now it's on extreme performance. That's what I wanted to make sure. Okay. So while that's running that. Yeah, I like this mouse. It's not bad. Pretty responsive and a uh, nice little touch. I guess they were worried that people were not going to like the virtual touchpad, but I can tell you having used it for the few minutes that I've had it so far, it's actually worked out pretty well. Okay. So this, uh, this has a little bit of haptic feedback there. I definitely feel that pretty nice. The keyboard, the physical keyboard is actually pretty good. And I think so far, these two 13.3 inch displays, pretty interesting. Now, let's take a look at this um, included stand that they give you. It's an origami style stand. And what you do is you take it like this and then and it just goes, boom, magnets close it. And there you have a place to store the pen and the pen will store in like there, right there. See, so that's actually pretty good, pretty good. I appreciate that, Johan. Makes me feel, gives me more confidence knowing I'm doing a decent job. All right. You want to see Ubuntu Linux. We're going to try to get to everything. I'm not going to be able to put Linux on it today, but I will have a video. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that, uh, MD. But we'll see. We'll see. Of course, a lot to do on this. My Surface Pro 8 has never crashed. Good for you, my friend. That's good news. Is there McAfee? Uh, yeah, there is McAfee. What does the double dot at the bottom of the keyboard do? So the double dot at the bottom of the keyboard, where? What are you, are you talking about on the virtual uh, over here? On the bottom of the keyboard, double dot. I don't know what you're talking about. Question, does, the, uh, does one have the option to turn the second display? There might be times that one does not need both displays running. This would be extended battery. This will give us extended battery. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. Uh, again, I just took it out of the box. I, I'm, I'm learning about this as you are, as we're getting this out. Now, I do know that you can independently control the, the, the brightness on both. They're 400 nit displays each. And then of course you can adjust them independently, which is good. Yeah. I don't know, Mason. I would wonder about that myself. I'm going to have to look into that. I am not sure. Again, I just took it out of the box. We can find out, but so far I am impressed with what we're seeing so far. And again, having the display now that of course you can rotate this now the sound bar is right here, right? So we have that rotating sound bar. So again, it is the no, the Yoga 9 series here. Of course, is the Yoga Book 9i. And this is a pretty much a, a kind of score we'd expect. 8411, 2213 on a uh, Core i7, 1355U. U series, of course, give you better battery life. It'll give you good performance, but not gonna be as good as P series or certainly H series. Let's uh, see if we could do a screenshot on here. So I don't know if I have to hit the function in that. Yeah, so that's how that works. So you hit to do a screenshot with the keyboard function, then the Windows key, and boom, there you go. And of course, a lot of pop-ups here. Uh, try tomorrow. Okay, let me get my screenshot here. There we go. All right, let's test the Iris XE graphics real quick. That's reasonable weight. So looks like the weight is three pounds. We're gonna get a gene. We're gonna get a, a measurement in a second. Let's run this this test. I'll take. I'll unplug it. We'll see what the travel weight is with the plug. 
I have that ready to go, and then we can get our own measurements, and then we can compare it to what they're claiming, and of course, we'll see how that's going to do, as we have 115 of you. Do me a favor. If you have not hit the like button, it does help get it spread out of YouTube. Hit that like button. You want to do a super sticker, super chat, help support the channel. We have hit 141,000 subscribers on our way to 142, so if you want to join and you want to be part of this, uh, why not hit the subscribe button, and if you want to become a member, we do have memberships, three tiers that help support the channel on a monthly basis so gene is saying you would think that lenovo would have learned its lesson not to put the start button at the bottom right of the side of the key of the laptop uh every time you adjust the position on the device you hit that start button yeah so i, I don't know if i like the placement of it we'll see but you know we'll have to see how that all is going to turn out again i just took it out of the box so there you go all right so we got, uh, is that, that's a reasonable weight. Well, we're going to find out in a moment. And here we get our score here, 15,245. Let me take a screenshot. So pretty typical, and again, I forgot to do, pretty typical of this, uh, for, for this uh, processor. All right, let's take this. We can't keep the keyboard on there, right? I don't think we can. Oh, can we? I think I said to move it, right? You're not supposed to close it with that in there. No, doesn't, that's not the way to do it. So what you do is, I, I'm learning with you guys as we're using this. So we take this case, I guess. How does this work? So I think, and again, I'm, I'm just figuring this out just like you. So I think it goes in somewhere. I have no idea how this works. Or do we, does this have a case? I don't remember. Like, does this like pop over here or something? Or I don't remember. Or, and then the keyboard goes on here or something. I don't know. It, it is, it's a lot of stuff to figure out here. Uh, as far as weight is concerned, let's, let's figure that out. <laughs> I should probably have read up on this. Okay, so just the unit itself, right? So we've got it on kilograms here. Just the unit itself. That is 1.327 kilograms. And if I go to pounds, we're looking at 2.148. Okay, 2.148. Then if I add the, the keyboard, okay, 3.75. And then if we want to go back to kilograms, 1.574. And then if I add the plug, the pen and this for a total travel weight, 1.962 kilograms or four and a half, so 4.5 pounds. So there you go. So 4.5 pounds total travel weight, not the end of the world in terms of weight, but it's definitely a uh, little noticeable in terms of that weight. But again, you have all sorts of versatility. We got a super chat here from Spider Web. So thank you for that $20 super chat. And you always enjoy the content. I really appreciate that, my friend. I really appreciate that. So again, that's helping out support the channel. All right, so that's the travel weight. Let's turn that off. Any other questions? Only keyboard covered, only the keyboard is covered with the cover. Okay, that helps me out. So I can just cover this keyboard somehow. I think it's like a package or something. So if I put this maybe like here, and there you go, nice little package. Thank you, my friend. That, that helped me out. So a little travel package like this, right? I think that's how it, it's going to work. Again, I'll have to play around with it. So we got a super sticker from our good friend, Gene O'Brien. $5. Nice. Okay, so that's the travel package. You also get the mouse. I didn't count the mouse and the weight, but you get an idea of what the weight is going to be. All right. Thank you, Raphael. Letting everybody know, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, of course. That certainly helps out. All right. So, so far, build quality is looking good. You can take a look how thin it is here. And again, this title teal is the name of the color here. And it's really, really gorgeous, like a greenish 
bluish color, and it's very, very, very beautiful. This is one of the nicest looking portable laptops I've seen in a long time. Gets a little lip here, and again, we can sort of almost open it up with one finger. And again, you could always put it into the tent mode, of course, and then there's nothing on this side when you do that, I guess, or unless I have to log in here, and then you got it on both sides. Look at that. You can do presentations and stuff. A lot of versatility there. And then, of course, you can do, I guess you can do like a presentation mode, although it wants to lay down there. You can sort of do a presentation mode. And then, of course, you can do tablet mode, great for use with the pen. And then boom, 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 and there you go. So pretty interesting, although it's getting fingerprints on the screen a lot because you are handling the, the, uh, the two displays. All right, so that's pretty interesting. And, and it, it rotates, it's actually, you could probably see it here, it's rotating to the different, um, different positions. So if I wanted to put it like this, you can see here, now I can use it like a book, you know, like the Surface Neo. Remember we talked about the Surface Neo a while back? That was killed by Microsoft. This is basically the, the uh, successor in a sense of that, that idea, right? So this would be the successor to that. And you can adjust, again, the brightness of the two displays. Stunning color, Raphael, I agree. All right, so, and if you wanna put it in laptop mode, there you go. And then again, to do the key, for those that are joining us late, if you wanna get the um, keyboard on here, virtual keyboard, you do four fingers like that, and then four fingers like that to bring it down. And then of course you can have your Outlook over here or different little um, panels here, and then you can check the news and get updates on weather, et cetera, all the things you would wanna have at your fingertips. Again, it's a pretty versatile um, look here, right? It's a pretty versatile experience, so uh, pretty interesting. Can you sit on the bed and use it in your lap? Yeah, it's like any other laptop, right? You can you can see it here. It's like any other laptop. You can just, you know, use it in laptop mode, right? And that's what you're getting over here. And then again, you have the virtual touchpad here. And it actually works out pretty well. Little little surprising on how good this is working. How is everything going? Is the stream looking okay, people? Let's uh put it on me for a second. I use my 9i in bed all the time. Yeah. I think this is a little different in the sense that, again, you have a little bit more versatility than the traditional Yoga 9i that we looked at, the Gen 8. This has that virtual keyboard. And again, I like the fact that they're including the stand, the keyboard, the pen, and the mouse in the box for $2,000. Let's talk about the price for a moment. There, yeah, and there's no wobble either, right? There's no wobble here. Take a look at this. Very little screen wobble. So the hinges are on pretty nice. Now, $19.99 is definitely not cheap, but I think you're getting a lot for the price. You're getting two dual, you know, obviously dual displays, OLED displays here. So I can't argue too much with the price in the sense that, yeah, it's a little bit of a niche product, I guess. They're pushing the envelope, but it does have a lot of a lot of things that you don't normally see on a traditional laptop. Now, the, this is going to be the soundbar Bowers and Wilkins. It has Dolby Atmos. We'll, we'll maybe we'll get an idea of the sound in a moment, but uh, pretty good so far. Now, it does have a webcam. Let's get to the webcam here. It does have a webcam kill switch. So the camera app, let's load that on. And again, this is a 1080p camera. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it to you like I normally do. And let's bring in the brightness is again, brightness can be controlled independently. So let's see if you can see it here. There I am. Actually looks pretty good. Let's see if I can get this somehow to work and show you. Okay. Let's, let's see if I can get this to work. So let me, uh, let me put this. There we go. So this is the camera, folks. And it's 1080p. It's an IR camera. And there we go. Let me get the mouse on there. I'm using, it's kind of weird what I'm doing right now, but this works. Okay. So 1080p, 30 frames per second. What do you think? You know, it's not 720p, that's for sure. 
In fact, um, yeah, it's, it's a 1080p. So let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Okay, let's, uh, that was the camera. We got a quick look at that. And let's, uh, we can load up some more benchmarks if you want. Laptop looks all, looks all right. I mean, the camera looks good. Uh, William says the camera looks good. He's got the William Cohen seal of approval. That I take that any day of the week. Can you waterfall dual screen? Yeah, I want to show you that in a moment. Okay, so let's talk about that. So here we have the two displays, right? So say if I want this display. I'm not using the keyboard. And I want to waterfall it. So let's, uh, let's see how that's going to work. So if I go here, I'm not sure how this works here, folks. So that goes to that screen. And let me use the mouse for a second here. To move window to another screen, use the mouse or your finger to drag the window or to and then control and release it. Okay, let's get got that. Okay, so let's go here. So that goes on that screen, but how do I water? I know you can waterfall it. I've seen it. I've seen that. Let me, I'm going to have to look into that one. Okay, so that goes to that window, but I don't know how to waterfall it yet. Let me, uh, let me go to my notes here, the press briefings here. So laptop mode, okay, we got that. Dual landscape and dual portrait mode. Powers and Wilkins, pure sight OLED displays. I'm just looking through the press material here. Not sure how to, does anybody know, if you have read up on this already, how do you cascade it? to the different, between the different. So in other words, how do you make it, like you can make it all one display? In other words, waterfall type. I know we can do it. I've seen it, I believe I've seen it done on this. Again, I'm still trying to figure this out. Let me see if there's anything on here. And again, I'm figuring this all out with you guys. Okay, so these are the features here. You can see that over here. Features, dual screen interaction, standby, mobility, collaboration, entertainment, features, window management. Let me try that. So window management, okay. So it says drag window to set layout. Drag a window with your fingers, release it to move to the other screen or hold the window while moving to the other screen to place it more, uh, more precisely. So it's showing here, but I, I wanna see if there's another way Dual screen layout, hover over the maximize button on your mouse to place the window in the dual screen layout. So, okay. Okay, and then let's see what this says. Focus click, dual screen window layout, window flick, cross screen browsing. In a dual screen landscape, Tap the screen with five fingers to display the current app window in full mode across screens. Okay, in dual screen landscape. So this looks like it's in landscape, right? So I tap five fingers. Nope, that brings up the keyboard. Five fingers. Hold on. I'm, I'm retarded today. In dual screen landscape mode, tap the screen with five fingers. So, dual screen landscape mode. I don't want this. Okay, I'm going to have to figure this out. This is it right here. Five fingers. But is it both hands? It looks like it's one hand. Let me look at this picture. Hold on. So say I have this. Let's let's try this. Let's let's make this right. So if I go like this, there we go. Well, sort of. Yeah, there it is. There it goes. Okay, I figured it out. I'm 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 the problem here, not their instructions. I'm the problem. Pretty nice. Pretty nice and smooth here. Okay, and then if I go five fingers, that brings it back. And then five fingers, 
pretty easy and pretty seamless. Now that I figured that out, I'm happy. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I my problem, you're right, Real Shadow. That's my fault. I was in the Lenovo app. So you can cascade it here. Pretty interesting. I like it. I like it. <laughs> now I'm excited. <laughs> I was able to figure that out. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. And I don't know what this is. Okay. All right. So that's cross screen. Let's go back to the next. So we got Windows Flick. Drag the app title bar with a finger, then flick towards the other screen to display the app in full screen on the second screen. So, and it gives you a little, you know, little animation there. So if I go here, so if I go back here, right now it's in the cascade mode. But say if I put it in this one, and I could flick it on here. And I guess that's how you, I guess that's how you do it. Okay. So then we also have here the dual screen settings like we talked about. I'm not opening Outlook right now. Uh, so we got Windows Management, Virtual Keyboard, Quick Access, uh, smart note, smart reader, dual screen gaming. And again, I'll have to test all that probably in the video when I do it. Dual screen interaction. So I like that they give this to you right here on the bar. Uh, very interesting folks. Pretty interesting as we have 115 of you watching. So pretty interesting. And again, I'm learning all this with you as we're doing this. I did get a chance to check it out, the pre-production unit back in January, but of course that's a controlled environment. And didn't have this kind of hands-on interaction like we're having now. And this is a final production unit. And again, I did put a link in there. So there you go. If you did not figure it out, it would have driven you crazy. No, I was already getting frustrated. But I, you know, trying to live stream, control the cameras, make sure everything is running smoothly, and then figuring figuring all this out. This is not your standard laptop. You know, it's a little bit of a of a challenge here. But we, we're doing it in real time. And looks like it's a pretty good turnout today. Does the extension work in book or portrait mode? So I don't know. Let's let's uh, let's put this onto the stand here. And again, you put this like this, boom, and then you can put it up in vertical mode, like that. But I'm going to put it in this way. So I don't think it will it will do that with the five fingers. See, I think that's only, and then again, I think that's only, like it said, it had to be in the, um, not the portrait mode, but the horizontal mode. When will they release it? So it says coming soon. I'm going to reach out to my contact over at um, Lenovo to see when we can expect this. Again, I did leave a link to Best Buy um, in the description below. So check it out. Lenovo is taking the initiative to break the normal boundaries of contemporary laptop notebooks, form factors, and doing so boldly. You know, Ashwin, one thing I can say is Lenovo does push the envelope a little bit more than some of the other brands. Not that the other brands aren't doing other innovations and so forth, but when it comes to design, whether it be the ThinkPad X1 Fold, oh, that's been massively delayed. I don't know where that second gen is coming yet hopefully coming soon but they do push the envelope in their think book line when we saw the dual displays on that one and then of course we saw the, the, the ink on one of those versions and then of course now we're getting this which i think is the spiritual successor to the microsoft surface neo that was killed off by microsoft and i'm kind of disappointed microsoft didn't do it but i kind of like what lenovo is doing right here when will they start selling these things Sooner the better. I am impressed with this. Now, here's the thing, folks. Is this your? Is this the kind of device that's for the everyday person, the non-tech heads or the geeks like us? I don't know. All I do know, though, is where I think there are some good applications for this or some real utility is if you're, say, a stockbroker, you're day trading, you want to have multiple displays in a mobile environment that you're on the road, this might be one way to do it. If you like to multitask, that's another way to do it. If you are somebody who just likes to have two gorgeous OLED displays side by side, this is the way to do it. All right, I wanna get an idea of the sound of this. So let's, um, let's get to my epidemic sound. Let me put it on me for a second. 
So Epidemic Sound is going to give us some royalty-free music. I am, of course, I have a license with them. And then let me log into my account here. Just give me a second. Really, the physical keyboard is definitely the way to go if you want to do any kind of extended typing, long emails and so forth. That's definitely something I would uh, use with that. So let me just log into the account. All right, so let me go to my saved sounds here. So let's, uh, let me put it on here. Let's take it off this mode. Let's see, let's use it in, in, in sorry, notebook mode here. Um, we can put this to the side. And let's put the keyboard over here so it gets our virtual touchpad available. And let's listen to a sound here. And again, I can even bring out the MacBook as I normally do. Let me turn that off and let me go here. Okay, where is it? There are a few bugs here I'm noticing. All right, let me close that. So I need this to go, I need this, and I'm, let me flick this. How do I get it up there? I'm probably just missing it. It's probably very simple. Let me take my mouse. There we go. Okay. So, again, a little bit, you got to get used to this. All right, let's, uh, let me go to Epidemic Sound. Should be loaded in here. Again, we're doing this in real time, so bear with me, folks. I know there's over 100 of you watching, or about 100 of you. Okay, let me bring in the other microphone here. Let's go to this. Let me bring in the volume here. Okay, right now it's 100%. And before we do that, let me go. And again, I, I, moderators, check out the, the, the comments. I haven't checked it, so you know I'll try to get to everything. So let's go to Dolby. So we got the Dolby Atmos app here, the Dolby Access, rather. And let's go skip that. Let's get to the settings. I just want to make sure. So right now it's on music. I'm going to put it on dynamic. Because that intense identifies the content and performs automatic adjustments. But we'll just do that for now. So it's in the Dolby Atmos in the that mode. Okay, so the dynamic mode, and let's play it. I'll tell you what, sound is really good, folks. Sound is really good. Now, do we want to bring out the MacBook Pro to see how that sounds? Uh, let's see. Let's uh, put this over here. Okay. And let's put it to MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro 14 is really good. This is sounding good. But we'll see. I'm curious now. Let me get it loaded in here. It's pretty loud. Now, bass maybe could use a little bit more. We'll have to see. Oh, hold on. Let me let me let me close all that. Okay, let me bring in epidemic sound on the Mac here. And let me put it to 100%. Let me let me start this from the beginning and then you're going to tell me what you think. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to play the yoga book 9i first, and then we'll do the this one. And I think I keep hitting the power button here. You're right. Whoever caught into that. So not a good placement of the power button right there. Okay, let's uh, let's get that signed in. All right, let's uh, get that virtual keyboard going. All right, let's put the other microphone. Yeah, I think the MacBook has a little bit more fuller sound. This is pretty impressive, though, for a 13.3 inch dual display device. Uh, pretty good, pretty nice sound on this, I got to tell you. This is a little fuller, little bit more bass. Volume may be a little bit higher on this, but again, a little bit more fuller on this, if that makes any sense. But pretty good, pretty good for the, uh, the, the Yoga Book 9i. So not too shabby there. Okay. All right. So again, it's all subjective. I think the MacBook wins on that. Yeah, not a surprise. Not a surprise. All right. Uh, so pretty good sound on the Yoga Book 9i. So for those wondering, you can definitely use it. No headphone jack on it. Now, so far, we've seen cascading windows. We've seen it in virtual uh, keyboard mode here. We have the virtual, well, we have the physical keyboard there, but of course, you could always use the... Uh, virtual by putting your fingers like that and then of course bringing this down oops yep there and then of course you have the different panels here and then again you have different uh, information available at your fingertips you can do dual display gaming that can certainly have some utility there so a lot there a lot there all right so we're at let's see an hour and about a, just about an hour at 105 of you watching we've got 78 likes do me a favor hit that thumbs up let's help get this spread out over youtube all right how are the fingerprints on the screen specs say there is anti-fingerprint coding you know it's it's not bad let's uh turn this off for a second we don't need the mac now but let's take a look at that all right, so let's turn this off. So I don't like the placement right away. I can tell you, I don't like the placement of this power button. And let me let me shut it down. Let me let me put it to sleep or something. There we go. So do I see a lot of fingerprints after having used it? You see a little bit. Not too bad though. Not too bad. It is pretty glossy displays. Of course, they are OLED. Now, the displays are pretty gorgeous, but again, I'm not crazy about this placement of the power button right there. Not crazy about that. All right, let's uh, turn that on. And a gorgeous, gorgeous OLED displays. Very bright, very sharp. Uh, it's going to have the deep blacks, the vibrant colors, you know, everything you expect on an OLED display. I love this uh, title teal color, and you can see the display here. Uh, pretty gorgeous dual displays, pretty gorgeous. So pretty nice. All right. 
Let me know what you think about it. Now, as far as opening opening it up or anything, I don't know. I don't see screws or anything on here. Um, you can see it here, and I don't see anything. And I'm not gonna. I'm not about to open this up. So I, I'm pretty sure you cannot upgrade the RAM. But as far as the SSD, I'm not sure because I don't see any screws. There might be under these feet. But I can't be certain. And I, I could reach out to my contact over at Lenovo to see. But uh, pretty nice. Not getting too warm either. We've been using it. So it's been pretty good. Now, I didn't hear. I don't know if there's any fans in this. That's the other thing. Is this a fanless design? Let me see if there's anything mentioned in the br press briefing here. Let me see if there's anything in the press briefing. As you can get a look at the bottom display. Uh, let me do a search here. Fan. Doesn't say anything, so I'm not sure. And I don't hear, let me see if I can hear anything. No, I don't hear anything. But again, I don't know. Does anybody know? Is there a fan in here? I haven't heard it. Let's, let's, run, let's run a benchmark. Let's actually run a benchmark to see. Um, let me load in one here. Okay, McAfee's here, my friends. So let me go to my drive here. And let's go to this. Let's load in. Let's do a Cinebench R23. Okay, let's do a Cinebench R23. I think the I think Pad is better than a yoga book. It just depends on what you're looking for. Business-focused laptop is a little different than this, of course. That one, of course, is um, more focused to commercial, and this is commercial. This is a more consumer based, I guess. Uh, we'll we'll see. But anyway, let me go to my downloads here. Let me load in Cinebench R twenty three, and let me let's see let's see how this does under load. We'll do a five minute test. The fan is on the hinge. Okay. I do hear something. I do hear something. So there is a fan in there. Very quiet so far. But again, we haven't really pushed it until now. Let's see what this is going to do as far as performance. Um, let me go to the power and sleep settings here. Best performance there. And then, of course, on the Lenovo Vantage app, let's make sure we have it on the proper setting, power. And then we go power performance. It's on the extreme performance. Okay, that's what we want in extreme performance. Let's get the most out of this. All right. So again, a little slow unpacking this one. So maybe the processor is a little bit not on the fast side. And again, U series processor, 13th gen, a core i7, 1355U that has 10 cores, eight efficient cores, two performance cores. We've seen it before. It's not going to, it's not going to be blazingly fast. But it's definitely going to be nicer than some of the other ones we've seen on the 12th gen, 11th gen, in the U series. So we're definitely going to see some improvement. Where I think you're going to want to look on this device is not so much, uh, you know, AAA titles, uh, 4K video editing. No, I think this is a mobile device that gives you dual displays, that gives you a lot of versatility uh, to do different things, multitask, and do, be productive in a lot of ways. So very interesting. It's a maybe a niche device at the end of the day, but it's pretty interesting at the same time. So while that's loading in, let's take some more of the, Can you can expand the trackpad. So can I? So now what is this button here? Let's take a look at this uh, right here. So, oh, okay. So that's, that takes away let's uh let's go right here so this little button you tap that this just takes away the lines if you don't want to see where it begins and ends and then tapping it again brings it up i don't know if you can make it bigger smaller i don't know did they give a mouse in the package too they do right there nice little nice little touch a little slow on that upload on that um extraction there now now that you used it for an hour or a little less what is the battery usage 
I don't know. I haven't really been paying attention to the battery. It does have 80 watt hour battery, folks. So you're going to probably get decent battery life. Again, I can't guarantee that since we're using two displays. So 80 watt hours is pretty, pretty nice size for a 13 inch device. Although you're having two 13 inch devices stuck together, basically. So I'm not, I'm not expecting gangbuster longevity here in terms of the battery life, but there you go. Yes. The keyboard I think can work. It works via Bluetooth. So if I want to raise the, yeah, so it's working right here. I'm raising the, see, I'm doing all that. I'm raising the volume. I'm typing. So nice. The fact that you can use this not attached as well. Again, more versatility, especially when you use it with the included stand, right? That origami stand. So yeah, you can definitely do it. A little slow here. That's what I'm noticing. But again, I'll run the benchmark and we'll see what's going on. And again, I'm connected here. I'll probably un detach that but it's my drive is connected to that hub all right that's almost done and let's take some more of your comments and questions so in indonesia indonesia they do not give the mouse so that may be a u.s only i don't know nice little touch though i like the fact again you're paying two thousand dollars again link in the description below over at best buy here in the u.s i don't know internationally you're going to have to check your local markets, but I can tell you it's going to be available at Best Buy, showing coming soon there. Again, for those that want to see the specs here, these are the specs, and then right after it shows you this, it'll show you the Best Buy, and I'll load in. While that's doing that, you can take a look at that. I'll load in Cinebench here as it's finally extracted, and let's do the install, all right? So you're seeing here an 80-watt-hour battery, 80% in 30 minutes, so that's going to give you, or yeah, 30-minute charge, Gives you 80%. All right. And let me accept that. All right. So let's go back over here. And I just want to show you here. You're going to see a Best Buy, $1,999.99. And it's showing it's coming soon. So expect it here in the U.S. in Best Buy or maybe North America as well. So again, internationally, I don't know. All right. Let's, uh, let's bring it back here. Let me put the keyboard back on here and then i'll be able to use this as well so we have cinebench r23 loaded here let's run it and of course uh actually you know what let me stop that i wanted to do a, a shorter one hold on i was a little premature there so let me go to the um preferences here and let's do five minutes all right and then we can do five minutes and then we can go advanced and we're going to do the custom five minutes. And this is going to test the multi-core. And I want to hear the fan noise. And we should probably test for the thermal imaging here. So we don't need this. Oh, actually, we do need this connected. Because, I'll tell you why, we do want to keep that connected. Because the power is going in there. So, so there we go. All right, that's running. And McAfee is involved here. But I want to see how hot this gets. I haven't noticed it get overly hot on the bottom here. It's been pretty lukewarm so far. Let me take out my thermal imaging camera and my Galaxy Z Fold 4, which I use to video, video that. And I hear the fan going. I'm assuming it's a single fan, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I definitely hear it not loud. In fact, while that's loading in, let me give you a measurement of the decibel level. So 45 decibels, definitely noticeable fan noise under load. I didn't really notice it when we weren't under load, just doing normal tasks. So definitely noticeable 45 decibels, not the quietest. All right, so let's take a look at here and I'll put it on this camera.
So it's about 44, 43 Celsius over there. Let me take the keyboard off. Okay, so again, 44 over here. I didn't see anything else that was concerning. That's not very hot. So good so far in that regard. Let's uh, put it on the bottom. Let's get the bottom measurement. It's about 46 right about here. Nothing too concerning. That's good. So far, looking good. Let me get this measurement. So the exhaust must be, there must be an exhaust there because that's where I'm seeing that. So again, 45, 46 around this area. So I don't see anything really concerning as far as heat. Not too bad. So about 42 to 44 around this area. Okay, that's that. All right, and so that gives us the measurements right there. Okay, so not too bad. And we'll get our score in the multi-core here in a moment. About 45 seconds or so left on that test. All right, so let me get to your comments and questions. How does this compare to the XPS 13 Plus? These are different devices. This is very different. So the XPS 13 Plus is a more traditional clamshell. This is a very, very bleeding edge type of technology. Very versatile. Again, pen support right here. Um, the display, the origami stand, the keyboard options, virtual versus the physical. I mean, it's just, a, it's like comparing apples to oranges in my book. I like it. Again, is it a niche device? Maybe, but it is pretty damn interesting. That's for sure. I, I'm, I'm pretty excited to really put this through the paces over the next few weeks or so. All right, so we got a score here. It is uh, 7869. So uh, pretty much what we'd expect. A little less than I normally would see, I guess. But again, I'm not r running the total updates here yet. Let's get a single core as well while we're at it. Um, there we go. That's running. And then again, we can talk more while I put myself uh, down here. All right. So there we go. This was a good year for innovation, according to the Tasteful Thickness. <laughs> what a name. Uh, this was a good year for innovation. E-ink, dual displays, and products like this. I like it. Yeah, listen. You can say whatever you want about Lenovo. They are pushing the envelope, folks. Is this a worthy upgrade to last year's 9i? This is a... It's hard to say because it's a very different device. Do you need two displays? I mean, you have to ask yourself. You are paying a little bit of a premium. Obviously, you do get the whole package for $19.99, which is a lot less than I thought, to be honest, that it was going to come in at. And again, if you, this is what I would say is the spiritual successor to the now defunct or ill-fated Surface Neo that never came to fruition. So we have something now with two displays on it. And to me, it's pretty interesting, right? It's pretty interesting. So I'm liking it so far. I'll have a full review on this, so don't worry. I'm going to have some really good content. Uh, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and why not subscribe? It's you know it's a good uh, way for you to help support the channel. And again, hit that thumbs up. Let's get this spread out. Uh, looks like a lot of interest in this device so far. Good turnout here for the live stream, so really good. And it's a pretty good time. 10 a.m. I did it here Pacific time. We're going to cover different time zones. Uh, normally when I do it during the week, it's not conducive to most people, but again, it's the time I can do it. Again, I wish I could accommodate everybody. 
Internal specs, John, I'm gonna let it scroll down on the bottom here. I have already brought up the graphic as well, but you can see it as it scrolls here. That's gonna be what's going on. Again, we're looking at U-series processor. We're not looking at ultimate performance here, 4K video editing, although you can add an external GPU. Don't expect to play AAA titles on their highest settings, but I think what you can do with this is pretty good productivity work, especially if you need to multitask, having the two displays. You know, I when I edit video or something like on the road, although I, this doesn't have a discrete GPU, I bring a secondary monitor, an external display, portable monitor, uh, the one I rev reviewed way back when, and I still use it, the OLED one, forgot the name, off the top of my head but um the fact of the matter it was in, into hill i think it was called anyway i take it with me and i have two displays because when i'm editing video i need to have one display showing what the video output is going to be and the other one is the timeline so uh having the two displays makes it more conducive to doing work same thing here you have the two displays and again putting it in uh vertically stacked or horizontally it's just a lot of versatility that this this provides uh, it's way more than a programmer would need. Uh, I need one screen for coding on another. Uh, it's way more worth it for programmers, okay? I need requirements on one screen while coding on the other. Exactly. When it comes to multitasking, I think this is where the utility of such a device comes in. Again, is it a niche device? It remains to be seen. It might be, but again, I like that Lenovo is pushing the envelope, okay? So that, that to me, that's good. I like that. All right. You could use this for trading too. Yeah, obviously, whole, if you put it in this mode, and again, I'm still running the benchmark, but if you put it in, or even in this mode, actually, this is a great mode, and you can see it here. Having the two displays, and again, it's my camera is not zoomed in, it's a little too zoom, zoomed in, but you get the idea. Having the one display on the top, you know, have the ticker on one, and then having some programs on the bottom there, Again, graphs and so forth. If you're a day trader, if you're in the stock market and so forth, you're a, you need to have dual displays. This is a great mobile option. I still so uh, William still uses the mobile uh, monitor, the KYY that I did. Yeah, that's another good one. Uh, but I like the OLED on that one that I did from Intel. Uh, but both are very good. So that's, you know, you can, and again, having the ability to put it into the uh, horizontal or the vertical mode, again, gives you a lot of versatility, folks, a lot of versatility. And then again, you don't want to use the virtual keyboard. You don't have to just snap it right there magnetically, boom, or you don't even have to use it. You can use it without the keyboard connected just via Bluetooth. So there you go. All right, so I, we don't need the, we got the specs there, so you got an idea of what you can expect. And a nice, pleasant surprise, having a nice mouse in the box for those that don't want to deal with this, want to use more traditional mouse, pretty portable, nicely, nice responsive so far. It's been pretty good. Greetings from Germany. Inter very interesting device. And again, you can see it here, this title teal is what they're calling this. Uh, pretty nice, nice looking. And again, CNC machined aluminum, not seeing too many fingerprints on the out, outer exterior of it, of course. Th four, uh, three Thunderbolt four ports, one on this side, two on this side. So they are separated, that's good. No USB-A, no HDMI, none of that, right? No headphone jack. Again, very, very, um, very portable device. And I'm not, ex not too, un not too, uh, surprised that they don't have those extra ports of course it is a portable device one thing i don't like again i don't like the power button right there i've been tapping it inadvertently a number of times so far that i've had it so a little bit not great placement on that so far and the the wobble on this is virtually non-existent you can see it here so if you're typing boom 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 you're not going to have too much screen wobble very good tight nice and tight the hinges hinges are looking really good very premium build premium build it's a multi-niche device. I agree, Julius. Nessa saying, Garden of Treasures. I don't need displays, so I'm more looking forward to the release of the Yoga Slim Pro 9i. Yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on that one as well. So hopefully we'll get that uh, rather, sooner rather than later. Um, let's get to some more of your questions. You do need the mouse when using both monitors and full monitors. And I think that's obviously, William, I think that's why they do include it. And again, I don't know outside the United States if they're going to include the mouse, but I do like the touch that it was in the box, a nice, pleasant surprise. So that's been pretty good. 
All right. This has been a lot of fun so far today. Does the waterfall mode work in book mode? Uh, any and with any apps? I don't know. I think it said it only worked in the horizontal mode, right? But when we asked, oh, I'm sorry, it only worked in the vertical mode or when it's in horizontal mode, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, when it's in this mode, one on top of the other, oh, but when it's vertical mode, side by side, I don't think it works that way. But again, I'll have to do more ex, uh, you know, investigation into all the features that this has. Again, I took it out of the box and I'm showing it to you for the first time as you are. We're all learning about this together. And again, I did get a look back at CES, but I didn't really, it was a pre-production unit. The software wasn't ready. So it's really the first time I'm getting a really good look at this. Yeah, it's almost like a real book in a way. So you have two side-by-side -side panels. And again, I love the fact they give you the origami keyboard, the, the, the origami stand, which also doubles as a keyboard cover when you're traveling, uh, double, double duty there. All right, we got our score here, 1,827, pretty good on the single core, and 7,869 on the multi-core. And again, I did the modified five-minute Cinebench R23 test. So pretty, pretty good, not too bad for 13th gen U series processor. So again, uh, I'm not expecting this to be the gangbuster performance, right? Let me take a screenshot of that. All right, so now that's done. Again, I could take some more of your comments and questions and then we'll probably call it a, a live stream. Uh, let's see, do, 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 do. So thanks, Shadow. That's what I was thinking, according to John Reed, similar specs to last year, but the new screen is the upgrade. There is one more USB-C compared to last year, but you lose the regular size USB. And again, you know, they do have the Yoga 9i, the traditional one. I looked at Gen 8 a couple of months back already now. Uh, that's a more traditional laptop that gives you a little bit more options in terms of the ports. But again, this is something a little bit more niche, a little bit more more unusual in the sense. And again, my hat off to Lenovo for pushing the envelope once again. They seem to take a lot of chances and they they come up with these concepts and they actually bring them to market. Unlike some other brands, they actually bring them to market. And I got to give them credit. Not everything is going to work and not everything's going to be well received. So far, this is looking pretty good. This is a lot better than I thought it was going to be so far coming out of the box. Uh, the premium build quality looks great. I like the versatility between the physical keyboard and then you have the virtual touchpad if you need it. It's got haptic touchpad, haptic feedback on that. Yeah, it's pretty good. And again, like I said, you can use the, the keyboard uh, without having to and look how bright those beautiful displays are. Uh, you don't need to have it connected, right? It's Bluetooth. That's what I like. And we saw that, by the way, when I did the Robo and Kala. If you didn't see it, go to my channel. That's a really good Surface Pro 9 with 5G competitor. That one had the, the keyboard cover that does also have the dual mode in it where you can use it as a Bluetooth keyboard. That I really like. So... Uh, from Bikramaji, I recently discovered your channel. Love the way you make the in-depth videos. Really appreciate your hard work. I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you so much for that. that. That means a lot. That means a lot. All right. So we're at over an hour, hour and almost an hour and 24 minutes. I think we're going to call it a, a live stream here, folks. I could stay here all day, but I got a lot of testing to do. Obviously, uh, more to come on this. But uh, I want to thank the moderators for doing such a great job here. And then again, I, I'm going to have my hands full with this. I have other reviews coming. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I really do appreciate everybody showing up. It was a nice turnout today. Uh, one of the best ones we've had in a while. So really good. Thank you, Raphael, for your work. William as well, the moderators. Everybody else for contributing. So let's cue the music here. And I got my work cut out for me. So I'll see you in the next video, people. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.